Like EVs and e-bikes, electric scooters are also fast gaining popularity in many cities across the world. Like these other electric transport systems, electric scooters are also battery powered and particularly work in a very fascinating way. E-scooters allow you to move about your city seamlessly and are efficient for quite a diverse number of terrains. If you're looking to get an electric scooter and you don't understand how it works, then you should absolutely watch this video till the very end. In this video, we've detailed the mechanism behind how an electric scooter functions and you're surely bound to be intrigued by the simplistic sophistication of this new age technology. Over the past 10 years, the popularity of electric scooters has increased thanks to developments in technology and material science, advances in ride comfort and convenience, and and most importantly, awareness of the risks posed by climate change. The components of an e-scooter include a battery, motor, throttle, brakes, motherboard, and controller. And among these items, the battery and engine are two of an electric scooter's most crucial parts. Now to comprehend how an e-scooter works, you must first understand the functions of all of these different components. For your scooter to move and take you wherever you want to go, its different components must communicate with one another in a way that gives you control over how it should run and function. The battery. One of the most essential parts of an electric scooter is the battery, which affects how far the scooter can travel on a single charge. The more powerful the battery is, the longer the ride distances on a single charge are, and the better the overall performance of the scooter is. The batteries of e-scooters are typically either a nickel metal hydride battery, a lead acid battery, or a lithium ion battery. In many respects, the development of lithium ion batteries has contributed to the increased popularity of electric scooters and e-bikes. E-scooters are mostly powered by either Samsung or LG lithium-ion batteries. Given that, they are lightweight, durable, reliable, and long-lasting. An electric scooter's battery is made up of an anode, a cathode, and a porous or void membrane known as a separator. A medium exists between these two terminals through which lithium ions can move. When discharging, lithium ions travel from the anode to the cathode and vice versa when charging. Electricity with which the scooter is powered is produced by the back and forth movement of lithium ions between the anode and the cathode. To boost the energy storage capacity of current Li-ion batteries, the area between the anode and the cathode has been largely constricted, allowing scooters with this type of battery to travel over a much farther range on a single charge. The energy storage capacity of Li-ion batteries is measured in watt hours. The higher the watt hours, the bigger the battery capacity, and the more range the scooter will have. While this is not the only factor affecting the range, of an electric scooter, it's about the most important one. Other factors like a rider's weight and road conditions also play huge roles. Motor An electric scooter's motor is a crucial part. The top speed, climbing ability, load capacity, and to some extent, the range of a scooter are all influenced by its power. Today, brushed DC motors and brushless DC motors are the two fundamental motor types found in e-scooters. The foundation for brushed DC motors is an earlier motor technology that dates back to the 1800s. Two sets of electromagnets are used by brushed DC motors to produce energy. Inside the motor, a big cylindrical mechanical brush pulls a smaller magnet along, creating magnetic fields that drive various coil faces. As a result, the motor inside rotates continually, producing power. The efficiency of brushed DC motors ranges from 75 to 80 percent. Brushless DC motors, also referred to as brushless direct current motors or BDLC, are a more recent invention that first appeared in the 1970s. In some ways, brushless motors resemble brushed motors that are inverted. As a result, the elements that are immobile in brushless motors are the magnetic components that move in brushed motors. Digital switching circuitry is used in these motors to alternately power several motor coils. BDLC motors are around 85 to 90 percent efficient. In comparison to their brushed equivalents, they are stronger and have higher power to weight ratios. The majority 
majority of high quality electric scooters use BLDC motors for power. In fact, the prediction is that in the future, almost all models of newer electric scooters will include brushless hub motors. This is because the motor is built right into the wheel itself, making the electric motor and the wheel one and the same thing, as opposed to having one motor drive all the wheels through chains and gears. E-scooter hub motor operation is straightforward. The motor receives input from the user via the controller. The controller tells the battery to release energy to the motor so it can move when you press the throttle button on the handlebar. Hub motors deliver electromagnetic fields to the motor's static coils. The associated wheel spins as the motor's external portion try to follow those fields. Although better performance scooters may have much, much more power, the majority of electric scooters are rated between 250 watts and 600 watts. For every 10 to 20 watts of electricity, you can typically anticipate 0.62 mph. Anything less than 300 watts though will typically have trouble navigating more difficult terrain. However, brushless hub motor electric scooters are rather pricey. The good news is that they outperform brushed motor systems in terms of efficiency, quietness, and durability. Hub motors also require less maintenance because they are less likely to malfunction. Throttle. When operating an electric scooter, the throttle is also crucial. Not all e-scooter throttles are made equal. Thumb, finger, and twist throttles are the three major types of throttles available today. For twist throttle, the scooter accelerates when you grasp and twist the entire hand grip in your direction. However, you might have to utilize your thumb and all of your fingers. For finger or trigger throttles, the scooter moves when you press down on the throttle with your finger. Most performance settings, including cruise control, display brightness, and regenerate braking intensity are likewise easier to access and use with this throttle. The thumb throttle has the smoothest speed modulation of any type of throttle. The scooter accelerates when you press the throttle inward into your hand. The thumb throttle has become the commonest feature of most entry-level electric scooters. But how exactly does the scooter work? To put it simply, the throttle gives instructions to the scooter about how fast to accelerate. A signal is transmitted to the controller through cables when the throttle is pressed. The controller then commands battery in order to give the motor extra power which then allows your scooter to move forward as a result of the motor's response. The speed at which your scooter moves is entirely dependent on the amount of pressure that you apply. Overall, throttles are useful if you want to cruise at varied speeds, ride over an even or steep terrain, or conserve battery charge the controller. Every feature of your scooter is powered by the controller, which is unfortunately one of the most undervalued parts of an e-scooter. It enables the communication between practically every control, including the acceleration, electric brakes, battery, and motor. Your e-scooter's controller receives inputs from you and transmits them to the necessary component. For context, the speed controller shuts off power from the battery and signals the motor to cease functioning when you apply the electronic brake. Breaks. A metal shell that doubles as a heat sink is typically attached to the controller for this purpose. E-scooter controllers are assessed based on how well they regulate current and voltage. Both the maximum voltage and maximum current will be higher than those mounted on more powerful e-scooters. On electric scooters that are poorly constructed, controllers are known to malfunction. The scooter can be dangerous to ride if the controllers fail. Brakes. Electric scooter brakes only have one purpose, to keep the rider safe. A foot brake, a mechanical brake, and an electrical brake are the three different categories of e-scooter brakes. The most fundamental kind of electric scooter braking system is the rear foot brake. All you have to do is to use your foot to apply pressure to this brake against the back fender to generate friction and bring the scooter to a stop. Mechanical brakes are a reliable type of electric scooter brakes, and they've been around for a very long time as well. Either a hydraulic brake or a disc brake can be part of a mechanical braking system. The left handle of the scooters equipped with this braking system typically has a lever. Riders must depress this lever to apply the disc brake 
to either the front, rear, or both wheels. One of the most sophisticated braking systems for e-scooters is the electric brake. It fully halts the motor's ability to travel in any direction. Additionally, this braking system has regenerative braking capabilities. This indicates that each time it is triggered, power is sent back to the battery. It's crucial to purchase an electric scooter with all three types of brakes. When it comes to safety, a disc brake and electronic brake combo are excellent. The motherboard. The motherboard is the brain of your electric scooters. It monitors the various parts of your vehicle and tells them what to do. It gathers information about the battery, motor, throttle, and electric brakes, and then passes this data to the other parts. The motherboard then opens the conduits, keeping the battery power within proper limits. The energy from the battery at this point then goes through a bunch of wirings towards the engine, which allows it to comprehend quickly it out to pivot. This sign is sent from the motherboard telling it the specific force expected to accomplish the speed you've chosen to move at as the rider as you push down the throttle. Frame the structural element holding all components together is the e-scooter's framework. It can be made of a variety of materials, including steel, carbon fiber, and aluminum. When you wish to take a break while riding, certain electric scooters have seats. It's crucial to understand that the frame of an electric scooter carries the majority of the weight. The weight of the frame alone might reach 24 pounds. Make sure to initially inquire about the scooter's framework before making the purchase if you're worried about about the weight of your scooter.